What the? Whoa! I was shooting you in the damn knee, man. What did you just pull that from? Out of his. Oh, there's a rat. Oh! <laughs> That's one thing I was waiting for. <laughs> I'm glad they kept that. <laughs> I don't get any loot. Oh, come on, man. Ten horrible ways animals can end. Oh, dear God, what have I done? <laughs> oh. Let's see. Slice your belly open if they're a big ass bird. Yes. Bite you in half. Eat you. Yes. Envenomate you. Oh, a gator death roll. Poison mm. you. Yeah, mm. drown you. Uh, smoosh you. Mm hmm. Oh. A gorilla, gorilla would would just like oh, pull your pull pop your, your head off. off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, chimpanzees the worst. Rip your rip your like genitals off. Yeah. What? Oh, that's what they start with. Their primary attacks are bite off the fingers, rip off the genitals. Uh, there's uh, Komodo dragons, which will kill you with infections. Oh, that's right. Oh God. So we're up to eight. I'm missing two. I'm sure he'll inform us. And he, he'll probably mention ones that we never even bothered to think of. Mm -hmm. God. So. Oh, boa constrictors. Be constrictors. <coughs> yes. Squeeze to Not death. Not necessarily boas, but like big pythons. If you had like anacondas. an anaconda. Yeah. And it was pissed off enough anacondas at you. Anacondas and reticulated pythons. Let's stop talking about person. snakes, please. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Kate. Sorry. So, yes. Uh, animals can do horrible things they can also be awesome i mean look at this little animal right here in the middle of kate it's she's just, snoring yeah you probably if you hear a weird snoring sound that's that's lulu she's just laying there the big the big furry lump just she's sitting there she's become quite content from being out of the cat room yes so. yeah had her in, and, and that's the thing with lulu she's very needy and that's one thing that i i guess when mom told me, like, I was like, hey, we got Lulu here. I mean, you can have her. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll take Lulu. Not knowing that she was as needy as she is. I love I love her to death, but she can be very, very needy. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing about her. Oh, but she's still a good girl. She's still a great girl. What she likes kids? to lay in the middle of the bed. Yes. And every time I moved, she hits me. Yes. And I'm like, bitch, you're in my bed. Exactly. I and, and that's the thing with me. I, I would have her, like, her favorite spots were, like, whenever I was laying on my side, it was either, like, right here in front of my belly, mm -hmm. right here beside my neck, or or behind my knees. Yeah. And... Well, she was on my side, and I was, I was laying, like, flat on my back, and then I wanted to turn over, and she got mad. She's like, how dare you? <laughs> oh, yes. Another t top ten ways of horrible ways to die. Mauled by kitty cat in, in your sleep. She just squeak. Yes. She, yeah. She's like, y'all talking shit about me? you damn right we are. And we love you for what it. What are oh. you doing? Just burying her face in the blanket. Oh, you listen to that purr. You need to purr. Take, I'm trying to take a nap and it's too bright down here. So I'm trying to it's too face. bright and too loud. Y'all humans need to shut the hell up. There. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'll make her happy. So yeah, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get into this, and let's uh, check it out. This is Ten Horrible Ways Animals Can End You by Casual Geographic. Here we go. Hope y'all didn't think you were sick just because Halloween's over. This video was actually supposed to be posted on Halloween, but um, I don't even have an excuse. It just be like that. <laughs> Not much of an intro this time. So here's sure Ten enough. Horrible Ways Animals Can Put Your Autobiography in the History section. Not necessarily in order, but it does get brutal, so I'm gonna do something I've never done before. Viewer discretion is very much advised. Oh, damn. Whoa. That's the only For warning him you're to gonna say get. That. When that music starts, it's up. Also, I kinda owe y'all more Halloween content, so if this gets a certain number of likes, I'll do a part two. Uh -huh. All that aside, let's get to the content. Hippo. Oh. When you think of some of the apex predators on the planet, you might think of heavyweights like lions, Holy shit, bears, it opened the door. crocodiles, yes. and of course you got the biggest bully in the ocean. Not the seal, but the killer whale dragging it. But what you probably don't think of is a prehistoric steroid gecko found on only remote islands in the world. And that's exactly what makes the Komodo dragon one of the most <laughs> underrated killers on the planet. This homicide lizard can grow to 10 feet long, weigh nearly 200 pounds, and swim 
and can run faster than your mental health is prepared for. Oh, this shit. video isn't sped up. But the most lethal thing about them is something you can't see. The Komodo dragon has up to 60 razor sharp serrated kitchen knives for teeth tough enough to dissect the full grown buffalo and tear flesh in chunks. But it's how they catch their prey that's unsettling. It was believed that a Komodo septic bite was potent enough to cause its victim to retire to a bacterial infection. But it turns out this modern day dinosaur uses a toxic venom that it injects into its prey. This venom reduces the body's blood clotting abilities and makes it more likely for you uh, to see. Yeah, I keep out hearing back and forth. Like it used to be like, oh, yeah, there's a bacteria. bacteria. Then uh, I thought it was venom. Then I thought it was bacteria again. Now it's venom again, apparently. I think there's just different. I think there's just different, like, strains of, of Komodo dragon. And one it depends on the bacteria. The other one depends on the toxin. Maybe I don't know. Because well, if your blood is not pretty able sure to they clot, only... then you're not. I mean, you're gonna. You're gonna bleed out. They only live on like one island, so I don't know if that there are multiple strains of them. Well, maybe. Well, I mean, because that's uh, that's the thing. I mean, biological like biological anomalies can pop up out of nowhere, and maybe the ones with the toxins were how it was, but then there were some that have evolved to not have the toxins, but their bacteria was still super deadly enough to where they could be still be a viable predator. I mean, I don't know. That's the... Th I mean, nature's fucking weird, man. Other symptoms include lowering of blood pressure, shock, and muscle paralysis, and that last one's gonna be real important later. The venom's so powerful that just one bite can be a death sentence for a tank like a water buffalo. Which means Komodos yeah. don't have to waste energy trying to chase down a meal. All they have to do is critically wound their prey and then wait for and them to wait, die. Yeah. And because these reptiles that time left behind are only found on remote islands, and they have a borderline disrespectful <clears> sense <throat> of smell, there's almost no point on the island you can go where this lizard Liam Neeson won't eventually track you down. Lizard and the Liam reason Neeson. paralysis being a symptom is such a problem is because Komodos won't exactly wait for their prey to be past tense. Just as long as they're too weak to fight back or run away. Because these lizards will eat their prey alive with the only oh, relief coming when you eventually hell. flatline the blood loss. And even though Venom's the main suspect, you can still get clapped by a slow, painful bacterial infection. The first response of animals like buffalo okay. after they've been wounded is to escape into nearby water. Going into unclean water with an open wound is how you lose your life to a horrific case of sepsis. And again, your life doesn't have to end for his meal to begin. Not only have Komodo dragons been known to attack humans, they've been recorded seeking out human graves, digging out the corpses, and then feeding on whatever human remains they find. Ugh. Nothing on this. That's fucked up. What? Not only is it a, not only is it a freaking tank. Not only does it have razor sharp teeth that can tear you up like a chainsaw. <clears throat> but it's also a fucking human grave robber. <laughs> it's just unfair, man. The island is safe from a Komodo. Not even another Komodo. Because Komodo hatchlings will spend most of their childhood up in the trees. Why? Adult Komodos are cannibals that'll devour any young dragons they wow. run into, even if it ends up being their own children. We're talking about a 10-foot venomous steroid chameleon that'll track you down no matter where you go and will friendly fire its own kind. And it's only the first animal on this list. We talked about these winged bastards a couple videos ago, so this is going to be a quick one. Now, plenty of birds eat other birds, but few are as sadistic about it as these overgrown ice vultures. Even though giant petrels are scavengers, they will target and jump weaker injured penguins as well as snatch up any unaccompanied penguin chicks they can find. Just like a lot of animals you're going to see on this list, giant petrels will eat their struggling prey alive in groups and they have a nasty habit of breaking in through the back door. I can't show you, but there are videos of these prison pigeons pulling out the intestines of a penguin through its anus. All wow. while the penguin was alive and fighting for his life and the sanctity of his booty. He lost both. And Holy it's not shit. just penguins that get victimized. Giant petrels will attack other seabirds like the albatross and put them out of commission by forcing them underwater until they drown. But nobody gets it worse than penguins. The giant petrel is so vicious that once one snatches a chick, its parents usually won't even bother trying to save its life. Mm. Meaning Happy Feet could have ended with Mumble getting brutally shot shanked by a gang of flying booty bandits, all while his parents just sat and watched. And since a penguin's vital organs are protected by a layer of fat, penguins can take a lot of damage before permanently piecing out. Alternatively, penguins can suffer through hours of abuse before experiencing the sweet release of death. One researcher watched a gang of about 20 petrels tear apart a penguin that had already been mauled by a fur seal until there was nothing but a skeleton with feet attached. Mm. Don't think you're safe. The southern giant petrel has been nicknamed a stinker because they'll feed on any rotting, decaying carcass. To the point where these birds will tailgate boats and consume whatever foul, putrid nastiness the sailors dumped off. Petrels eat the same way they live, with no conscience. 
So if you're ever injured or incapacitated somewhere in the Antarctic, pray that help finds you before this bird does. You won't be a fan of how that movie ends. Oh. Hey. It'll end the same way if you're ever chased by a pack of African wild dogs. In a neighborhood with lions and hyenas, these dogs are actually the most Look efficient at their ears. killers on the planet. They got satellite dishes on their fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, hey, motherfucker, I heard what you said. This, 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 this is just be like, this is just be like, oh, this is going to be fun. This is like, I'm hungry. This one's just like, hey, what y'all up to? Planes with a hunting success rate of about 80%. These African bush cujos have a very complex and nuanced hunting strategy. They just keep running. These Endless. killer canines can run you down at speeds of nearly 40 miles per hour for Endless a distance stamina. of over 3 miles, and in a sprint they can clock in at a blistering 45. All running away does is delay the inevitable. It's like hitting the snooze button on death. Once the prey gets chased into exhaustion, the dogs oh. will clamp those jaws around the panicking prey's snout and flank and force it to the ground. And for the third time on this list, they don't wait for you to stop breathing to start eating. And the bigger and stronger you are, the more you suffer. Because they're able to put down animals like warthogs in as little as two to five minutes. Damn. But tankier animals like the wildebeest can spend the last 40 minutes of its life being gruesomely mauled by a pack of about 15 merciless murder hounds. Ooh. The suffering that these animals go through before passing away. I mean, at that point, if I'm a game warden and I see that happening, bolt action rifle, one to the head of the animal that's getting pieced out. Because... Mm -hmm. I hate seeing animals suffer. Yeah. I mean, animals animals die for sustenance all the time. The thing is, is that if you scare off the uh, predators with that shot, then you just messed with the natural cycle. Well, if it's a suppressed if it's a suppressed rifle, I mean they won't hear it from a distance. Maybe. And once the entire pack has you surrounded, there's virtually zero escape. And African wild yeah. dogs have the unsettling habit of starting meals off by tearing a hole in the abdomen and pulling the intestines out so they can get to the organs and fat first. To mm. add insult to life-canceling injury, unlike lions, African wild dogs give puppies priority and let them eat first. So not only would you still get disemboweled, it would be the cutest members of the pack doing it first. Mm. <laughs> so cute. Yeah. Uh, final words. Oh, so cute as, you know... As your throat gets ripped out by the cutest little African wild pup it's ever. It's like, hi! And it's like, oh, hey, little guy, you're so <laughs> adorable. I'm gonna eat you now. What? Oh, God! Basically, <laughs> imagine being chased by a <clears throat> gang of animals that never get tired, while knowing once they catch you, they'll confiscate your intestines and feed on your organs. All while you wait for the man upstairs to call your number. What could possibly be worse than that? Holy oh, shit! Hyenas are everything African wild dogs are, but on juice. Mm. And even though hyenas are genetically closer to cats and mongooses, hyenas basically behave like dogs on steroids. Thanks to lions, they're King, also people... much, much smarter mm -hmm. than uh, than your average like. I believe hyenas animal. were just cowardly scavengers that only survived by scrounging a living off of other animals. The truth is, not only do hyenas personally murk 70 to 80 percent of their meals, they're actually more efficient at it than lions are. And it's all because hyenas and African wild dogs have one very unsettling thing in common. They're both serial killers on Duracell, meaning the bastards never get tired. Spotted hyenas can run at high speeds for over five miles without even thinking about being tired. Which is why they don't have to ambush or one-shot their prey like lions, they'll just chase them into oblivion until one of them gives up. And hyenas don't give up. It doesn't help that hyenas have jaws strong enough to amputate a rhino. With a bite strength of about a thousand pounds of force, hyenas are tough enough to eat virtually any part of an animal. They have such a habit of eating the bones of the deceased that their poop often comes out white. With mm. a vice grip for a mouth and the Damn. eating habits of a coffin, if a clan of hyenas is your serious finale, then the only thing your family will have left to bury are memories. Cause once you're on this overgrown mongoose's meal prep, there won't be a lot of you left to put in the casket. And since there can be up to 80 members in a clan, and just one can take down 30 pounds of meat in one sitting, you would basically be a Ritz cracker to them. But if I'm being honest, the real reason hyenas are on this list is because of this video, and guys, Y'all gonna feel this one. Ah, oh, ah, oh, no, 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 I've oh, seen this, yeah, I've seen this. Oh, oh dear God. Oh. Hyenas have a devious habit of going for the family mm. honeypot, but it is for a reason. Hyenas don't have the ability to instantly end their prey the way big cats do. 
So for larger animals like the buffalo, it's way easier to perform a hands-free vasectomy and just wait for blood loss to do the work for you. Ooh. Imagine a mouse trap on your baby factory, but with the force of an adult moose stepping on it. Ugh. Yeah. Damn. <sighs> I've seen that video too many times. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Yep. This next animal is probably going to be the most unexpected on this list, but let me paint a picture. <coughs> Take a wolverine, right? Put it on creatine. Give it the personality of a power tool and then dump it in the same area code as some of the most vicious carnivores in the jungle. This face of generational trauma belongs to the sloth bear. Yes, the one from oh. Jungle Book. Sloth bears may not hmm. look like much. They're easily dwarfed by some of the more brolic bears, one of which may be on this list. They're not even super notorious predators, as insectivores, a sloth bear's grocery list is mostly ants and termites. But don't let the sloth in its name fool you. These furry chainsaws know how to get active. Sloth bears share an environment with leopards and tigers, and tigers have been known to actively hunt and eat them. Which is why the sloth bear is one of the most aggressively homicidal bears out there. Even though they have a size disadvantage, a pissed off slothy has been known to drive off even the most motivated tiger. And sometimes these bears clutch a 2v1. And since sloth bears can't escape in trees like American black bears, it's like nature Damn. told this dark skinned poo that violence was his only option. Years of character development means this demon yogi will view almost anything alive as a threat, and that includes humans. Look, look at its He's freaking so cute, though. look at its freaking lips, dude. Well, not yeah. there, but it's like, oh. in the other picture. Yeah. Sloth bear. He's like, hi there. <laughs> uh, Hello. 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 My it's name. Boy say my name. Hello. My name is Baloo. I'm here to guide you through the forest. It's like, oh, thank you. But you're gonna have to pay. What do I have to pay? At the end of the journey, I'm gonna eat you. An arm and a leg. Yeah, there you go. Their attacks are incredibly brutal. The same claws they use to destroy concrete like termite mounts can disembowel you with one swipe. And unlike grizzlies, because sloth bears do have to worry about predators, they're much more likely to attack unprovoked. According to first hand accounts, sloth bears will often maul their victims and then chew and suck on their limbs until they're reduced to a bloody, mushy pulp. Sloth bears also typically go for the face, incapacitating their victims while biting and slashing to the point where neither your mother or your iPhone can recognize you. And of course, an animal that motivated usually won't stop until you're not moving. Which is why even in tiger country, more people get sent to the emergency room by the baloos of the jungle. And if you're really unlucky, Damn. if one's able to sever a critical artery with those adamantium fingernails, then your series finale will involve you bleeding into the afterlife. One man was able to survive a particularly brutal mauling at the hands or paws of this bear. He recalled feeling immense pressure as the bear tackled him, put its full weight on him, and crushed his leg in its jaws like a celery stick. When the bear was put out of commission, the man thought he got off easy. Until he looked at his leg and realized the bear had torn an entire chunk of his flesh to the point where he could see his muscles moving. And in rare cases, these bears have been known to stab pad. One infamous bear known as the Sloth Bear of Mysore had a human body count of at least 12 people while having also severely mauled another dozen. So when I call this bear a box cutter with claws, I'm talking about both its personality and the way its victims tend to look after. But of course, it's not the only bear on this list. I bet the polar bear is on here. Because mm -hmm. those bastards are absolutely brutal in, in, the, uh, in the Arctic. Because when you're one of yeah. the few animals that will actively hunt what did humans, I say? you're guaranteed a spot. Thanks to global warming, most of the polar bear's hunting range is now underwater. A desperate polar bear will even attempt to go after walruses, even though walruses can one-shot them with those tusks. But a starving bear will resort to putting humans on the list if they get the chance. A polar bear is like a maxed out bloodhound. They can smell a seal from a mile away and they can even track its scent through three feet of ice. Which is why it's been said, if you see this Caucasian carnivore in the wild, it's already too late. There's a good chance the bear's been hunting you for hours or even longer. This is Tim Jarvis, and during an expedition in the Arctic, he was allegedly stalked by a polar bear for a total of 10 days. Now add the fact that they can outswim every heat at the Olympics, and sprint fast enough to get a ticket in a school zone, and you'll see why getting on this ice killer's radar is a death sentence. Remember how African wild dogs tear into their prey while still alive? Bears are just triple XL dogs that'll usually clamp their jaws on the prey's back to disable it. And the back is usually where they start eating from, with the intestines being one of the first things to get pulled out. Also, polar bears are estimated to have a bite force of about 1,200 pounds per square inch, believed to be strong enough to crack a bowling ball. And if one yeah. paw swipes your back, at best you'll be a pair. Look Whoa. at the size of those paws. You... Like, it, I got a fairly big hand. That is... Okay, Makes you feel so insignificant. 
Yeah. Of course, you'll be a hashtag. And at least Sloth Bear's attack out of self-defense. When a polar bear puts someone on the news, you can be sure it was 100% premeditated. And the worst part of it all is that normally polar bears wouldn't see humans as Happy Meals. They prefer the fat, nutrient-rich seal. But because of what we've done to their hood now, polar bear doesn't even need to see you or hear you. If you're a mile downwind of a starving polar bear, that could really be all it takes. Remember the rule of thumb. If it's black, fight back. If it's brown, best get on the ground. If it's white like the president, you finna be heaven sent. <laughs> I like that. I didn't expect that. If, you, if it's white like the president, you gonna be heaven sent. I like that. Next. The African wilderness has some of the most vicious and violent predators Ooh. on the planet. Some of them we've actually already talked about. So it says a lot that out of all of them, the one nicknamed Black Death is actually a vegetarian. The African Cape Buffalo erases about 200 names from the census each year. It's because of, of a simple phrase. Fuck around, find out. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> meet Mr. Find Out. That's not counting the people that live but still get severely gored. They're also strong enough to <clears throat> ragdoll top tiers like lions, hyenas, and of course, people. Those horns aren't just for intimidation. When a Cape Buffalo charges, the hooked end of its horns can get caught under the skin and tear apart the flesh of a predator or a tourist that just doesn't know any better. Mm. Yeah. Of course, at 1,300 pounds, they don't need horns to end you. They can oh, easily hell. just trample you into a Yeah, child. exactly. But there's another thing about them that makes them not only a walking <laughs> obituary, but earn them yeah. another nickname. Yeah. The Widowmaker. Because one of the fastest ways to get a divorce is to tell your husband to go hunt a Cape Buffalo, because then you'll probably go to bed single. And that's because this Widowmaker is one of the most vengeful animals on Earth. A wounded Cape Buffalo will often retreat and hide in tall grass or brush. Now, if the hunter has more than one brain cell, he'll usually just give up and leave the beast alone. Yeah. But if you make the mistake of following the injured animal, then you run the risk of getting ambushed and knocked clear into the ground. Holy and after shit. hitting you, the Cape Buffalo will just back up and wait for you to get back. And they are the agile for being so big. They are massive, but they are so quick. Hmm. I mean, people talk about, like, you know, kings of the jungle and all that, lions and shit. Mm-hmm. Nah, in the bush, the, this is the motherfucker <laughs> you don't want to see in the bush. Hit stick you again. Don't oh. keep doing this until you just stop getting up. And that's just what one can do to you. These guys can travel in hoods of up to 200. Oh my God. And these herds will often circle a possible threat, leaving no possibility for escape. And they'll just keep circling until one eventually sees an opening and attempts to impale you. And the same rules apply. If you're still moving, they're not finished. That kind of attitude is why lions. <laughs> lions face. He, he's like, I fucked up. I fucked up. I fucked up. Cosplay as house cats when a herd of is <clears throat> involved. And why hunting one should come with a life insurance package. And out of the entire starting lineup known as the African Big Five, these murder cows are considered to be the biggest threat. But ironically, one of the most feared mammals on the entire continent isn't on this list. Yeah, no suspense here. Hippos are just waterproof horses with a sender's address from hell. Hippos put about 500 names in Twitter bios a year, and that number is probably higher. They're famous for choosing violence with anything in their territory. From Everything. Open crocodile, Bruh. All the way to lions, humans, and literally everything else. Also, you'd be surprised how fast they are in a straight line. The, the, the rule when it comes to evading a hippo on land. Zigzag. Because... While they are very good in straight lines, they are horrible at turning. Hmm. So basically, they're like a they're like a, a sprint car that that doesn't have a steering wheel. Like if you have a pulse, they'll find a reason Ooh. to hate you. In fact, the biggest threat to a hippo's way of life is very literally often another hippo, because oftentimes when resources are low, bull hippos will see babies as competition and will turn the adorable infants into fish food. Here's a dark joke for you: Where did the baby hippo go after the baby shower? everywhere he went everywhere. Oh. despite being the third heaviest thing on the planet with legs hippos can run at speeds of 30 miles per hour yeah and they can outswim you or technically outrun because hippos don't swim they literally run on the oh, water and i don't think videos. that makes this video any better yeah. But just like actress Tiana Trump, Holy it's that shit. mouth that makes them infamous. Bull hippos have tusks that can max out at 20 inches long and they can slam their jaws at nearly 2,000 pounds of force but if you've ever seen one eat a watermelon you already knew that Mm -hmm. Which is why the biggest mistake a croc can make is pull up to a hippo pool party because it can end up getting <laughs> just be like you're about to get turned into a suitcase, motherfucker. Getting turned into a purse. <laughs> 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 and 
the biggest mistake a person can make is getting too close. I hope this is photoshopped. Hippos are one of those animals that don't need a reason to turn you into a statistic. <laughs> you can just hear the voice line for him yelling at this hippo. It's like, stay out of my bog! Hippos don't typically eat meat, but their attack style involves using that massive overbite and chewing a person into human applesauce. And it's the attacks in water that are the most brutal. Even if you survive, the toll for crossing hippo territory can cost an arm, a leg, multiple broken bones, and even a punctured lung or two. One tourist guy yeah. in Zimbabwe was allegedly swallowed by this land well not once, Come but here, three baby. times. Come here. Come here. Aww. Come on. Come so on, good. girl. Come on. Come on. I'm in danger. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I think she's just gonna stay there for a little bit. It's alright. And you wanna know the worst thing about getting deep throated by this obese demon donkey? Other than the smell. It's knowing that your options are to either stay inside and suffocate, or try to escape and end up negotiating your left arm in the process. As for the tourist guide, by the time he got out, he had suffered 38 bite wounds, including one so nasty it exposed his lungs and completely crushed one of his arms. Ugh. This man rescued an orphan baby hippo from a flood and raised him as his own. He even named it Humphrey and said it was like a son to him. Well, Humphrey ended up mauling and mutilating his foster father in the same river he was rescued from. Oh. That's honestly how most movies with hippos end. Yeah, it Oops. don't end well. But at least hippos are so massive they're impossible to miss. The next animal is the size of a golf ball, but can turn 26 people into a very loaded story on CNN. Blue ringed octopus? The blue ring octopus yeah. is a lot of things. Tiny, cute, and it's one of the most well, venomous I always things. always tell you never to touch a little octopus if you ever come across one. It's alive. It's armed with a neurotoxin called tetrodotoxin, and a lethal dose for a human could fit on the head of a pin. Plenty of animals are venomous in Australia, from the jellyfish right down to the parries. But there's one disturbing fact about blue ring octopus. The blue ring octopus is so small that most people don't even realize when they've been bitten. And because they're so small and cute, some people will put the octopus in their hands not realizing they're putting their lives in the octopuses. Because not only is tetrodotoxin 10,000 times more powerful than cyanide, the neurotoxin shuts down muscles by blocking sodium channels. This decision can lead to muscle paralysis, respiratory failure, cardiac arrest, and then a permanent rest. Which is why one of the smallest animals on this list can turn you into past tense in as little as 30 minutes. And remember, you don't feel when this blue ring Bundy bites you. Meaning you can hold it like this for 3 seconds and then flatline in the same hour. And if you're swimming while that paralysis hits, uh, use your imagination. Oh, and there's no antidote. All medical professionals can do is hook you up to a respirator and manage your breathing just long enough to keep you alive. But with immediate medical attention, the chances of getting put in a casket by this blue ring hellspawn are actually pretty low. But with a bite that's impossible to feel, it's very possible to not realize you've been wounded. And without medical attention, the chance of your soul getting evicted suddenly becomes a lot higher. Which means this lady just barely Eurostep becoming a name on a stone in one of the worst ways possible. Cause anything that tries this hard to be seen is probably more toxic than future. That goes it's for horrifying how many videos there are of people actually holding one of those, not realizing what that what that thing could do to them yes oh. it's like it don't makes me wonder how many people that uploaded okay. those videos were in the hospital on respirators for a while before they got uh, yeah, they're just gonna keep growling at each other it's gonna end up tearing you up no you're all right you're okay hey <laughs> sounds like a little jaguar <laughs> well it kind of is. <laughs> You're okay. Meow. He's alright. You guys can get along. Okay. There they go. Well, whatever. <laughs> They're gonna fight each other for a while. It will take a while for them to get used to each other. You alright? What? Are you alright? Yeah, it's... I'm fine. Okay. And people. Number one. What's it gonna be? Come on. Gator. This last one deserves its own viewer discretion warning because in some ways it's the most disturbing well, stop animal on this list. Not only does it have the highest human body count, you can be a victim and not even realize it. That's because it's believed that over one billion people in the world are infected with mosquitoes. 
Oh, there's especially a problem in places with limited access to clean drinking water. But don't think this is just some third world problem. All you have to do is swim in waters containing eggs and you can lose the lottery and become a landlord to these parasites. Once inside you, these worms can cause a bunch of nasty infections and complications, but there's one disease that really stands out. These demonic flesh ropes are filarial worms and they're as thin as sewing threads. And their favorite hangout spot is in your lymph nodes, where a bunch of them can block fluids from leaving the body, which can cause tissues in the body to swell almost like a disturbing cartoon. Which is how a worm you need a microscope to see can cause a nightmarish condition known as elephantiasis. Mm. The situation where your leg can swell to the same size and color as an elephant's. And it doesn't just give you dumbo sized cankles. All guidelines will allow me to say is Google South Park Wheelbarrow. Get infected with filarials oh. and you might need one. But the unsettling part is you may never know you've been violated by filarials until it's too late. Mm. Millions of people around the world are infected and a lot of them have no idea. Which means, of course, statistically, someone <coughs> watching this video has to have it. I fucking hope not. If it makes you feel any better, if you live in America, you apparently can't get infected with filarial worms. But you're not safe from the hundreds of other parasites that can turn your insides into an Airbnb. Around the world, hundreds of millions of people are infected with parasitic worms oh. as we speak. And if you happen to be asymptomatic, oh, they can put a whole God. mortgage down on your body and you would be the last to know. Ooh. And that's just about it for this video. If you actually enjoyed this video, first of all, you're a psychopath, but also my <laughs> Patreon is going to be in the description in case you want to support this very questionable content. In fact, you could have watched this video two days before I posted it on Patreon. But as always, please don't feel like you have to send money in order to show support. Please feel like you have to subscribe though, I'm not playing with y'all. Subscribe or I'm just going to assume you have worms. <laughs> also follow my Instagram, if for no other reason but tell me you get verified. Honey, there's there's videos on there too, but honestly I just want that blue check more than a crippin Nike athlete. Happy Halloween, drink water, hug your mother, and have a nice day. Even though I probably just ruined it. Damn. Damn. Oh. Oh. Well. I think I'm going to the doctor here soon, because, uh... <laughs> yeah, I'm going to the doctor on Thursday, and... I thought it was tomorrow. <clears throat> I thought it was well. I thought it was too, but they apparently had to push it back because uh, don't know why. But they're gonna finally be taking care of this. Oh, nice. so thank God. But, yeah, I'm going to my doctor tomorrow. <laughs> Damn, Quinn is on it, dude. Quinn's already got everything <laughs> up to episode 24 nice. on on full metal. Damn. Nice. Uh, well, I. I would like to say, you know, these, you know, I still think animals are very awesome and very cute in certain regards, but it also scares the shit out of me just how quickly things can go from okay to horrifying. Like, all of a sudden, you're just like, oh, look at this little octopus, and then all of a sudden, it's just like, why is my hand tingling? Pretty much. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're you're just a quivering pile of jelly in a hospital. Yeah, as much as the blue ringed octopus skeezes me out, there's still the freaking caterpillar in South America. Oh yeah, I know the one. If you get stung by it, it'll make you bleed out all your orifices. Whew, God. What's that called? I can't remember. Hmm. <laughs> Lulu's just sitting back here, minding her own business. Y'all, y'all can probably. She was make my legs go to sleep. I'm sorry, I had to. Well, there. Well, she's a heavy. She is a heavy girl. <laughs> yeah, like oh, I be. A, she doesn't hardly weigh anything, but Lulu, she's a chunk. Lulu's a chunk of beef. Well, anyway, hopefully y'all enjoyed this, and if you want to see more from Casual Geographic, click click the name and the title of the video. But yeah, until next time, everybody, be good people, don't mess with animals, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.